So I came across these hilarious tweets and I thought I'd just shine a highlight on them. They're from this guy named Andy Slavitt. He says, COVID update, July 13th. There are successful examples of taking on COVID-19. And there is one story like no others, New York. New York did not get off to a good start. In fact, it was the example of what not to do. California acted six days earlier than New York did when they had cases hit. The mayor clearly didn't take it seriously, and Cuomo was slower to act. Mostly, Corey in New York was ringing loud alarms. So some thought it was unfair that Cuomo drew such high praise for his handling of the crisis, but he earned it for one reason. He talked to people. At the time, he was doing what Angela Merkel, Jacinda Ardern, Katrine Jacobs' daughter, and others around the world were. This situation is going to be difficult. I know it will be hard for you. Here's what we need to do and why, and we will pull through this. Something else. He didn't lie. He didn't sell. He didn't pat himself on the back or avoid responsibility. We had that already. Get it, Trump? Uh. He told the hard truth. He showed data. He asked for help. He demonstrated some empathy and some effort, and the country needed that. I've had my issues with Cuomo, and I don't like the way he runs New York's Medicaid program, but I respected what he was doing. I've never mentioned this, but I saw the data Cuomo was first presented with that he later shared, and I saw the model that Trump was presented with. For all his flaws, when Trump was hiding under his desk, pointing fingers, searching for credit, ignoring the scientists, Cuomo was fully present. This isn't about Cuomo as much as it's about New Yorkers, but I have to make one more comment. There's this right-wing meme about how Cuomo killed people in nursing homes. The nursing home meme was generally spread by people whose principal skill is retweeting unread clickbait. I ran the agency that saw nursing home safety and have been talking about this on TV and writing Hand with Governors. You can watch. The Trump administration began in 2017 announcing they would not enforce the sweeping nursing home rules that Obama put in place. Too many regulations. And it got worse from there. Many people have their hands on this mess. Trump admin, out-of-state operators, state inspectors, yes to all. And sadly, while this meme was great as a way to shift the blame to blue states, today 40% of Texas cases are coming from nursing homes. Turns out, it's difficult to keep spread out. It turns out that the nursing home deaths were caused by the same reason as in every other state. Staff bring it in untested from the community. One in four staff got infected, and they lacked sufficient PPE. The same thing is now happening in the Sun Belt. But this isn't a defense of Cuomo. No, no, not at all, man. The fact is, New York became the world's epicenter of COVID-19 for reasons that we're still understanding. A new strain. Dense conditions, late reaction, nursing home controls. But what happened next was remarkable. The only thing as steep as New York's rising curve was New York's falling curve. It was spectacular and historic. And that is credit to New Yorkers, to discipline, to community, to respect for the medical workers. We've seen the death by infection and by suicide of so many, many New York health care workers, one of whom saw 40 ICU visitors in a row die. For, ye for all of them, yesterday was for them. People died for 120 straight days in New York. It is 64 days after peak. 508 cases per million at the peak. Overall, 20,600 cases per million. 32,075 people gone. 22,795 in New York City alone. Yesterday, in every single ICU, nursing home, ER, and hospital bed, it was quiet. Not a single reported death. It's no longer just foreign countries who have shown that this can be done. New Yorkers, for whom many rallied for, flew to New York and jumped in to help, showed us this is possible. We can do this. 
New York now takes the virus as seriously as the rest of the world, and they know how to contain this. Their vigilance is just beginning, and sustaining it will be hard. But the backside of that curve brings tears to my eyes. The nurses, the doctors, the paramedics. The way to honor them? Let them be our teachers. Sit there in Phoenix and Houston and Charlotte and Miami and don't doubt them when they tell you not to mess around with this very scary virus. Sadly, some are deciding that they must learn for themselves. Arizona has now passed New York in peak cases with 528, ellipsing New York's 508. Florida is now at 436. Both governors openly flaunted their lack of preparation and lack of seriousness. They disrespected the sacrifice of their countrymen. The way that they can make it up is with a rapid steep decline. They should follow Greg Abbott in Texas. He also got it late and didn't learn the lesson of New York. But once he saw it, he acted with seriousness. All these states can achieve the same sharp drop as New York if they get serious. And for other states, the movement to begin closing bars today, to consider starting school online, to close churches, to roll back things, is the beginning of the political courage that they need to show. I've talked to governors and mayors across the country. Follow Abbott. Don't learn the lesson a third time. We can do it. Yes, we can, someone I know said. You know, who, Bob the Builder? The Senate must also honor what they've seen. Bar and restaurant owners should be protected. Unemployment insurance. Prevent evictions. Help Americans get through this. Hire the contact tracers. Get us the testing. Understand, without a president, you need to work with the governors. I spoke to Bernie Sanders about this today. He worked with Mark Warner and Doug Jones, the full expanse of the Democratic caucus, on a bill to protect Americans' paychecks. Your move, Mitch McConnell. Now that this is in red states, apparently he's taking another look. Our country's leading pandemic epidemiologist and I spoke for a while today. He gave a TED Talk in 2006 on this pandemic. He's advised presidents of both parties, and I've talked to him fairly continuously for the last four months. He believes bearing this virus is possible. He hasn't seen anything thrown at us by this virus, as nasty it is, as it is, that we can't defeat. He got evidence today. Thank you to our heroes in New York and in memory of all who we lost.